my name is Slammer4 and welcome to a very exciting video today we are I have the privilege to bring to you a uh, best of five match from the Little War Game Pro League this is from match day four uh, and the match is YOLO versus OP Kata starting off on map on in the top right we have AC representing team YOLO and in the bottom left representing team OP Kata we have Hero of Ages this is a very crucial and important match for these two teams. Uh, both teams is sitting at two and one at this point in the tournament. Um, and basically whoever wins this has the opportunity to advance uh, because they would advance to three and one score line with a wor at worst score line of three and two, whereas their opponent would go to two and two with a at best score line of three and two. And because the tiebreaker is head-to-head, -head, these two teams, um, whoever wins this will have the tiebreaker advantage and basically be almost guaranteed to go to the finals. Um, so an incredibly impactful match in the Pro League right now. Um, and the first match already, Hero of Ages versus AC. Hero of Ages has opted to go for a two-racks opening, opening up with some solid cheddar to begin with, while his opponent AC has gone on for the one-racks. Now, the one-racks expand is theoretically possible to hold uh, the two-racks. In fact, some would say it's a pretty solid build uh, to have up against the two-racks. But um, the only problem with this build order, really, is the fact that you obviously have far less raiders. You have to rely on worker production. Um, and, oh my goodness, AC is heading for the scout. Looks like he might... Oh, no, he goes back. It looked like he almost was going to get the scout there with his worker. That would have been a hugely impactful moment because he would have known what's going on. But instead, it looks like he's going to expand. Now, just to note here, AC is going for the build order where you actually cut workers to get the expansion out a little bit faster. Uh, it seems like this may increase your gold income by a tiny, tiny bit compared to the normal uh, build where you continue to build workers. Um, I technically generally prefer the more workers because I think um, that it's nicer to have those workers for defensive purposes, um, even if you have a maybe a slight uh, income disadvantage. So here's what's happening is that Hero of Ages has actually gone for um, a pool strategy where he is kind of pooling his raiders and holding them back, not sending them in until he has three. Um, and AC only now spots this with his scouting raider. So the problem with for AC right now is his raider is across the map, not in position to defend. So he'll only have the singular raider up against three raiders. Um, now he hasn't pulled workers yet. A little bit slow on the worker pull. He's building the tower, but still no workers coming in to defend. So now there are three raiders with a fourth one on the way. Um, already the raiders get a couple hits off on the worker. They get a couple massive hits off on AC's raider on the left here. And now these raiders should be able to blink and kill AC's raider. The raider does go down, and now it's four raiders against four workers. One archer comes up. The archer's going to get focused down and really, really quickly by AC, uh, or by Hero of Ages, excuse me. This is looking really good for OP Kata and for Hero of Ages on map one. Just a quick blink across by one of the raiders, picks off the archer, and now AC is left with just a handful of workers. His f initial raider is walking back, but it's going to be a while before this raider is here. Um, so it's going to have one soldier, one raider against four uh, raiders of Hero of Ages with a fifth on the way. Um, and there's just nothing left for AC. His workers are getting run around. There's only three workers left, two of them about to die. There's just nothing left for our blue yellow player. And it looks like, unfortunately, that this is going to be G to the G for our friend AC here. Um, nothing left here, and that is the first point on the board uh, found out by... OP Kata and by YOLO. Now the second map of the gay, I will load up in a second here, and we have Yummy Blah Blah versus Prankster Gangster. Um, in the top left, representing Team YOLO, we have Yummy Blah Blah spawning in, and in the bottom right, representing Team OP Kata, we have Prankster Gangster in the blue. Now, um, Yummy is a player who, in the past, has been an absolute top, top player, maybe the best player in the game for stretches of time. Um, so he has come back, he's a friend of Ace, he has come back to play for YOLO as a substitute since LogoCon, their normal player, was not able to participate for this week. Um, and he is going to be going up against Prankster Gangster, who is also subbing in for Weird Rat, player from OB Canada, who is not able to uh, play. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. 
Uh, Yummy, maybe his game knowledge is perhaps slightly lacking because he hasn't been practicing as much, but his raw mechanics and micro are really, really good. So uh, Prankster is a player who's been practicing a lot, but we'll see if his micro is up to the task of facing off against Yummy. Right away we see a build order difference coming from these two players. It looks like Yummy is going to be going for that castle first, whereas Prankster has gone for a one den expand. Pretty normal stuff coming from both players. This will give Yummy a slight advantage as far as income goes, a um, couple worker advantage, but to my mind at least it's not a significant significant difference. I think it's pretty fine for both players if I'm being honest. Uh, but let's continue to see how things progress here. Prankster's getting his expansion down. He just went for the one wolf, so this wolf won't be able to get any like damage done. Maybe he'll damage one worker, but he shouldn't really get any kills for sure. Uh, but this wolf can be a little bit annoying is all. So meanwhile, Prankster just continues up with his normal production stuff. We look at the worker counts. It's still very even. Um, everything is just pretty uh, standard, standard stuff for both players. Um, a little bit of a tiny worker uh, gold advantage for Prankster. Not sure why that is. Um, but in general, uh, Yummy's going to start opening up that income advantage uh, slightly as he uses both his castles to produce. Looks like he's cutting a worker. Actually, he just uh, can't afford to build a worker. He cut a worker for the faster den. Uh, which is interesting. I generally prefer to get the den later and just kind of risk it. Maybe that's slightly risky from me. I, I tend to be greedy and try to get that extra worker out, but Yummy's playing it safe, getting his dens, uh, which is probably a decent strategy at the end of the day. So now the wolf stage of this game is going to start here. Prankster's uh, castle is finishing as he transfers workers. He's just producing off of one den. So Prankster does have to be careful because pretty soon he's going to start losing uh, the wolf advantage uh, as the double den production is going to start outpacing the single den production and it really comes down to the single den player to not lose too many uh, wolves uh, for free or anything um, and it looks like prankster is already going for his uh, lair that's a two three minute uh, right about a three minute 15 lair Ooh, one wolf goes down from prankster a bit of a mistake there miss control i don't know why that wolf was wandering around he should have probably tried to go for a scout perhaps but uh now prankster is um actually behind a wolf, three wolves to five. Uh, I guess, again, that single den production just doesn't get that much. And oh my goodness, looks like Yummy's going to get a scout through. His wolf actually walks through and sees the, the dragon lair. He's going to see the dragon lair, which is a huge moment for Yummy. Meanwhile, Yummy has actually added his own lair already. So he, this is a very fast expansion from Yummy Blah Blah, or a fast fortress, excuse me, from Yummy Blah Blah here. Um, it's not as fast as this really fast... Uh, 315 uh, fort from Prankster, but uh, the uh, fortress has really only started about one worker later than the one from Prankster, which is actually really good for Prankster Gangster. Meanwhile, a wolf skirmish in the middle of the map. Yolo, uh, Yolo, Yummy Blah Blah doing a really good work here, picking off a couple of wolves here. There's a random worker from Prankster, not sure what's going on there, but that worker's going to get focused down really quickly, and unfortunately the worker count is brutally bad for Prankster all of a sudden. I'm not sure if he was missing worker cues or just the early castle or something really put him behind because it's 19 workers to 14. That's a brutal position. And it looks like another wolf gets ca caught by Yummy. So many wolves from Prankster going down here. It's really rough. If you look at the uh, units lost, there's been five wolves lost to two, plus that random worker that was wandering around. Um, which, I mean, isn't horrific, but it's still a pretty rough from Prankster and really not something that you want to happen in a game like this. Um, and now he's actually under a lot of pressure. There are six wolves here from Yummy pushing up against four wolves from uh, Prankster. One wolf go does go down. Another wolf gets surrounded. A couple really bad surrounds here from Prankster. He just lost two wolves for free. Now it's down to seven to five. And Yummy does have to run away because the castle is down. But look at the lair timings. Uh, Prankster has just got his lairs down. Whereas um, Yummy actually has double lair coming a little more synced. So actually Yummy's lairs are basically identically timed to Prankster's lairs. Which means there's going to be no dragon advantage for either player. But look at that worker advantage, massive worker advantage and wolf advantage for Yummy here. Um, so unfortunately, Prankster is in a pretty tough spot at the moment. Uh, if he continues his work production, maybe he can sort of catch up, but he's still down like three to four workers at any given moment, which is just so rough to be that far behind this early in the game. And unfortunately, it looks like he's still cutting a little bit of worker production, so he's not catching up as quickly as he hope, uh, you hope that he would. Um, now, both players are going to be starting to produce dragons at a pretty consistent clip uh, already. Prankster, for some reason, rallying up to here, not exactly sure why, but he's going to be producing lots of dragons, and Yummy will be doing the same. Uh, let's keep a just close eye on that unit tab. Once again, a worker advantage for Yummy Blah Blah. 
and a very significant wolf advantage as well. Gibby's going to start edging, uh, eating away at these workshops on the left, perhaps trying to attack the left side of Prankster's base. Meanwhile, uh, Prankster's just trying to get a scout off, perhaps scout that third base timing, which, by the way, we do have the third base already down for Yummy, um, which is just a really clean position for him to be in. Uh, he's already got the dragon, so he's basically safe. He's got the ground army, and he's actually taking his third base. So everything is just working out really, really well for Yummy here. And the only, I think, hope for Prankster here to win is... Um, I mean, he could possibly stall the game out, take his own third. He about is close to be able to afford it. Um, but that's going to be tough with the amount of wolves on the ground. And the fact that really he has, you know, identical dragon counts. So he can't really kill the wolves with his dragons without fighting the dragons of Yummy. Um, but uh, the other thing he could do is just pile out just a ton of dragons and try to overwhelm Yummy with superior micro. So we'll see if he's able to do that. For some reason, his dragons are wandering around the top side of the map. That's kind of bad. Um, he'll have to bring those down immediately to defend. Meanwhile, Yummy's trying to get a couple, some damage off of the workers, but not too much is done. It looks like the wolves are going to start to filter in for Yummy. It's 15 wolves to 6, just a massive advantage in all counts for Yummy Baba, but there are a slight dragon count, and of course the reinforcements for Prankster are going to be massive. Uh, again, this is pretty rough that the dragon here is not fighting. He could have a second dragon here, or a third dragon here, excuse me, doing really good work. The one advantage he has, uh, Prankster that is, defending is that he has um, the defender's advantage, so his wolves and dragons can come together. But uh, I don't know... There's four dragons on the map for uh, Prankster Gangster, but I only see one of them. I'm not sure. Oh, one of them is across the map. Okay, he's trying to do some weird harass across the map, but unfortunately this dragon's going to be picked off by the reinforcing dragons of Yummy. Meanwhile, the wolves from uh, Yummy have been just nibbling away at the house, which is actually fairly wasteful um, from uh, Yummy Blah Blah. And actually, I think the wolf count has been uh, going, starting to turn into favor of Prankster Gangster. I think Yummy lost quite a few wolves basically for free in this engagement here. But now Prankster has to be so careful, it looks like one dragon might get caught. Um, really good micro from Yummy overall with his dragons. He hasn't been losing any of them yet, and he's been ge generally trading better than Prankster Gangster here. He just has to be careful to not take too much tower fire. Now Prankster does get his expansion going. Um, uh, do note that Yummy is mining 31 workers off of three bases, so his income is going to be really good here. But it is only 7 dragons to 6 dragons, so I think Prankster... Uh, a couple of these dragons are so low, though. That's really rough for Prankster Gangster. If he's not careful, both both these dragons are going to get sniped down. Yeah, there, there they go. One goes down, another one goes down. Just some really low health dragons here, unfortunately, for Prankster Gangster. And now he's just having a hard time fighting this uh, army of uh, Yummy. There's just so many dragons, and they're just doing such good work. Also, now Yummy's going to pivot towards push pressuring the third base. Obviously, there's no tower at the third base, so it's going to be easy for him to make that uh, engagement um, do well. I think maybe if Prankster can wait for... Ugh, looks like he's not producing dragons. He has to be producing dragons non-stop here, otherwise he's just going to die. And it looks like a pretty rough clump here from Prankster in a second. Oh, the way goodness, the dragons are clumping. So much damage is going to be going down into these guys, and they are going to be taken down. Look at that, five dragons to seven. Uh, the wolves of Prankster chase with the wolf of Yummy, but he still is not producing at this uh, at this castle. He doesn't have his worker working there, and Yummy is just continuing to mine full production, full mining almost at that base. Um, looks like there's a little bit of production miscue here from Yummy, but that's fine, uh, more or less. Um, and overall, it's three dragons to eight. Yummy has killed so many dragons of Prankster. I don't think there's anything left for our OP Cata player to do at this point in the game. Uh, there's just too much damage put in from the dragons of Yummy Blah Blah, and uh, it looks like YOLO is going to be probably uh, evening up this series at 1-1 one to one with this map victory, and that will bring us to uh, map 3 in just a second here. Let's see uh, if there's anything more to do in this game. I mean, the castle's going down, there's so many dragons, it's 8 dragons to 4 at this point. A couple of the dragons from Prankster are so low, uh, Yummy can just engage and just win at this point. There's really not a lot for Prankster Gangster to do, sadly. I mean, the clumping is all there. Some of the dragons of Yummy are a little clumped here, but even under the tower, I think uh, Yummy will just be able to win. The castle's dead. Um, Prankster's producing as much as he can off of his two bases, but there's just not nothing left for him to do, to be honest. Um, there's too many dragons from Yummy, blah, blah. The only, like, thing that he has is he does have that triple layer versus double layer, um, but it doesn't matter. There's too many dragons uh, for our Red Beast player. Um, the tower is now going to get focused down by the wolves. Um, Yummy has upgrades coming behind, and there's just nothing left, um, unfortunately, for Mr. Prankster Gangster. Eight dragons to six. Um, actually, a decent dragon trade going on here, uh, but uh, it's still not going to be quite enough, I think, for our OB Cat hero at the moment.
You know, I mean, it's just kind of pulling back, trying to be a little bit safe. It's actually seven dragons to eight, so fairly close dragon engagement, but I think the HP advantage is still with Yummy. Um, and it looks like that micro uh, prankster has been st uh, stacking some of his dragons here, so his dragons really got slaughtered really quickly there. Um, and that is going to probably be G to the G, um, as there's just not a lot left for a prankster here. He's still, like, holding on just barely, but look at the... I mean, if there's a fourth base already up for Yummy. It's four to, four to two. There's just no, like, path to victory right now for Prankster Gangster, um, barring some kind of miracle engagement where, you know, uh, Yummy just will a moves his, uh, or move commands his dragons or something. Look at how many low health dragons there are. They have to run away from Prankster, and it looks like, finally, there's just going to be nothing left um, here in this engagement. So many low health dragons here from Prankster Gangster. Even though he's kind of trading decently well. Let's look at the units lost. Uh, 16 dragons lost for Prankster. Only 10 for uh, Yummy Blah Blah. So that's really the story of this game. Is that more efficient trading from Yummy. Uh, enabling him to uh, have the space to secure his 3rd and 4th bases. Where he kept the pressure continually up on Prankster. And never allowed Prankster to get uh, the expansions that he needed to stay alive. Um, I think Prankster is going to see that fourth base and realize, like, oh my goodness, this game is so lost. Um, and if we look at the current unit count, it's, it is eight dragons to nine, um, but a lot of these dragons are so low on health for Prankster Gangster, whereas all the dragons of Yummy are well upgraded. Plus two versus plus one, so also an upgrade advantage for, for Yummy, blah, blah. I think the only reason Prankster is able to keep up in dragon counts was temporarily he had the uh, triple layer production going, which was pretty good, but... Uh, now that the armies have really kind of equalized, I think Yummy can just A move in and win this game cleanly. Once again, Prankster unfortunately starting the engagement pretty clumped. Um, I mean, both players could probably be spreading a little bit better here, uh, but overall Yummy doesn't really care. He's got the upgrade advantage, he's got the army advantage, he's got every advantage that he could possibly need. Um, and this is going to be, this is going to be definitely the last engagement of the game as Prankster is being run and chased down to the corners of the map. He doesn't even have much production going. He's desperately trying to build a tower at his main, but it doesn't matter. He now loses his third base once again, and without that third base, he just doesn't have the income to continue to support production. Um, I think Yummy can literally just A move in and win at this point, and there's not much more that Prankster can do, sadly. Um, Prankster's just been holding on really well here because he knows it's an important tournament match, but uh, he is going to have to finally tap out here, and, fortunate, and uh, we have our second map win of the day. Um, and a first map for Team YOLO, bringing us to a tightly contested 1-1 to -one score line. Which now brings us to our third map, which is Slammer 4 versus Galaba on the map Ravaged. Slammer 4 uh, spawning in on the top left in the red trunks up against Galaba in the bottom right. Um, once again, there's definitely a slight favorite here. You definitely would think that uh, overall, Slammer is a bit favored over Glaba in this matchup. Um, however, this is also a really important map because since AC lost his map, which was pretty favored for YOLO, and then the final match is Thurks versus Prankster, which is definitely Thurks versus Prankster, pretty equally uh, contested map, but definitely one where you'd expect Prankster to be slightly favored. Um, so this is a pretty tough spot for YOLO to be in. The last map was pretty much a must win for them for sure. I mean, there's no way they can drop that type of advantage with a player like Yummy against Prankster. But now, um, they're in a t pretty tough spot with uh, Glaba versus Slammer here, um, which is on paper a favored match. I think on paper you kind of expect this series to go 2-2, but that's with assuming AC beating Hero of Ages and Slammer beating Glaba. So we'll see. Um, Opikata has a really great opportunity here uh, to secure a 3-1 if Slammer can, if I can uh, win this map here. Of course, this was played a couple days ago, which is why I'm replay commentating it. Um, notice the thing, one thing I do here is I build the worker on the outside of the workshop. This is because I want this worker to be scouting. So that's another thing that you guys can think about when you're going to use a worker for scouting. You actually want to build the worker such that it pops to the top side, not the bottom side, because then the worker will have to walk this extra distance before it can get to scouting. Whereas when it's here, it can immediately start walking and start scouting the map. Um, so I'm, my idea here is just play a pretty safe one workshop expand and scout with the worker, hopefully see any proxies if... Uh, Yummy dis or Glaba decides to go for any sort of proxy play. Glaba, on the other hand, kind of, I think, is predicting a one workshop expand because he's very confident to just go for the castle first here. Um, you know, gain that, that income advantage right off the bat and be prepared to deal with uh, workshop stuff. This is pretty good. I mean, already you can see he's mining 
uh, income before I have even built my castle, right? So he's going to have a large income advantage for quite a while. And it's interesting here, he's going for the tower right away um, <clears throat> as a potential defensive tool. So if I'm going for any core of two racks play or uh, two den play, for example, this tower placement is actually pretty clean. It, it, I think it covers mostly every thing that it needs to cover on this uh, map. Um, so that, that that's a pretty nice tower. I like this play from, from Glaba here um, as a defensive tool. Kind of trying to hedge bets, uh, be defensive against like, two dens or things like that, while also get that castle first income advantage. Um, so I think this is a build that, that we don't see too much, the tower castle tower build, um, because people generally feel like they just want to get the eco and they get the dens out faster. But uh, I think that for, for tournament play, when you really want to be safe, this is actually a pretty clean build, and I like it a lot. Um, if we look at the income tab, you can see that uh, already Glob is almost 100 gold ahead on income here. Uh, his current mining is, is quite significantly better. Um, and while his worker count is pretty similar, but it's actually going to pop up to about 16 to 14 in just a second here as I've been supply blocked as this castle's completing. Um, now the first interesting deviation has already come out here. I have decided to build a uh, Rax here. And this is a hybrid uh, build, Rax Workshop. Uh, which is something that is pretty unorthodox, not a lot of people play it. Um, so you're going to have to see how, how this works out uh, for us here. Um, the idea behind this build order is basically that you are going to be going in all in with catapults mainly, catapults, workers, and towers, um, and you're going to be supporting that with uh, the occasional Gatling and steady soldier production. The idea is soldiers are quite a bit tankier than Gats and are very good against wolves. And they're also a bit cheaper than Gatlings. Um, so basically, I'm just going to be streaming reinforcements of soldiers and units um, down and using the soldiers as um, just kind of meat shields, if you will. Um, Glob is going to try to scout off. He can with this uh, wolf. Nice, nice micro from the wolf. He actually gets uh, some damage out on the, cat, on, the, uh, on the gat from my catapult. So that's a little bit annoying for me. Um, he does micro it. Uh, just well enough to get out, but it does die. Um, so Glaba, by the way, just checking on the backfield, he's been going for upgrades, he's going for armor upgrades, and he's going for a couple wolves and a wolf drop, uh, which is an interesting choice. Um, in general, this is, this is I mean, obviously I'd probably like to see a third base, um, would be my ideal to see what's going on next. Um, would definitely love to see a third base to, to be facing off against, but this is decently okay in general. I was planning on facing versus mech. Um, so now my push is coming out. I'm pushing with three uh, catapults, two gats, and a couple of soldiers. Um, pretty gnarly supply block, but it looks like I'm going to be upgrading that in a second. Um, the wolves do come and get us around. I was just kind of move commanding, not paying attention, but uh, they have to run away. There's just too many units here for Glaba to deal with. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how Glaba decides to defend. He's going to get a snake charmers out. He's producing wolves off of both bases, and now he's going to add a watchtower to defend. Uh, this watchtower is just going to kind of buy time. It looks like he's adding another one up front. So this makes it impossible for my units to just run forward and kill him. Uh, I have to wait for the catapults to just kind of fire from afar and do damage, um, which is kind of fine because that's what my build order plan is in any event. Um, so I've just kind of been walking up with my units. I'm going to throw down a uh, tower here in position. Um, catapults are already getting some good fire off. I mean, two wolves go down for basically free. Just a couple of damage uh, hits down on a soldier. Um, and now I add a second tower, so I'm just continuing to bunker up as much as possible here. Looks like Glob is going to try to go in and damage some workers if he can. Um, but it's going to be pretty tough to do with the soldiers and the catapults uh, synergizing really well here and doing damage. Also, putting any damage on the mech units it is tough because uh, they do have the repair ability. Um, from the soul, from the workers. This tower, um, initially, it has gone up and is getting some damage down on the units, uh, on the on the soldier there, but it does get sniped down pretty quickly as the catapults obviously get in p position and really start to do damage. Um, I decide to go kill the den here, um, which in retrospect may be not the most uh, efficient unit to kill. It probably would be better to kill the tower, but it does force a response. Kalaba pulls all his workers, gets a massive... Uh, uh, surround here. I don't think I was looking at my units uh, correctly because I don't notice that the workers are coming. He gets two kills on the catapults really cleanly. However, he does not have the chance to kill as many of the other units, and now the tower uh, is continuing to put a lot of DPS into this fight. Um, and the workers are forced to run away from Glaba. He runs back. Several workers are killed. But killing two catapults is important because it really lessens the DPS down that I have onto his, um, 
his structures, which is what's really important here, because the catapults are what can actually kill the towers and such. Um, now, Glob has actually added his own catapults in this situation, which is an interesting choice. Um, he's assigned to go for his own catapults as a defensive tool, which means he'll probably stay alive. He can stay alive with this. It's really hard to stay alive with just Wolf Snake, because the Wolf Snake just can't deal uh, with the with the contain, right? There's no way for him to break out. The, ca the catapults are a way for him to break out. You really you go for catapults or dragons as the kind of your choices to break out. Um, so, interesting choice here from Globa here. Um, meanwhile, I decide to continue on. I see the catapults, and I realize that I don't really have enough catapults of my own. I'm adding some now, but I don't only have the one still, which is really not enough. And then the double tower makes it really tough to actually push in to this situation. Um, now that Glob has two catapults, he actually has the catapult advantage. And it's at this point in the game where I'm like, okay, I'm up against catapults, I'm up against double tower from Glaba. Um, I'm thinking to myself, I know I killed a lot of workers in that engagement. If I just take a third and continue to produce workers, I should be fine just to play the game out in a macro style. Because I know he's invested in towers, I know he's invested in catapults, which are not going to be very useful here for him later in the game. Um, so at this point, I decided to just kind of scout for a third base and also just bring my units back. Um, for a defense. I mean, if you look at the total mind, I'm actually pretty much equal. I'm only behind about 200, and he's lost about 500 more. Um, so overall, it's a pretty equal game, and I know my third base is going to be significantly faster than his, uh, because I think this catapult uh, will take a while to actually engage. In retrospect, I may have been able to defend this a little bit harder. Uh, perhaps I could use the towers in my units to kind of dark around and force these catapults back um, while sending most of my workers back. But this is just kind of the safer, cleaner play, so I decided to go for it. I'm very confident in my late game macro game at this point, just to uh, macro this out and, and take the win uh, with a slow and steady style and not risk anything. Again, it's kind of this thing of playing it safe, not trying to risk anything, because I feel pretty confident in, uh, you know, just taking my worker advantage and to the bank and winning with that. Um, he does try to engage here with the workers, but or with the wolves, but they don't really do much. Um, I already have my dropout, so I can start getting my upgrades and getting my those uh, uh, good harassment drops going. I'm just continually scouting the map to make sure he doesn't have any fourth base or anything like that. So my third base is going to go up. Um, his third base, he did take his third base at a good timing. Um, he didn't uh, wait in any, any way. Um, and it took me a while to actually coordinate all my workers into production. But now that I have them all, it's pretty good. Um, Glaba's going to go for the fortress, and he's going to go for those dragons. So really, his worker count is going to suffer pretty significantly here. You can see he only has 22 workers versus 27. Um, and I'm still producing three workers at a time uh, consistently. So his production, his worker-like totals are just not going to be as good as they could be. Um, now the one thing that he does, that Glob does have going for him, is he does have plus one, one, and he does have a nice drop. So this drop situation is going to make it pretty tough for me to, uh, you know, control and defend against. Um, I do send my own drop of a catapult and soldiers across. This is one of the nice things of having soldiers. You can actually start, you know, perhaps doing some damage. I decided to just click down the uh, animal testing lab because I know I can kill that with my catapults and my soldiers, but I don't actually notice that he already has good upgrades going. So. Uh, he's not producing off of that, so this this kill actually doesn't do as much as it, it kind of could have uh, done. Um, so meanwhile, I'm just continuing to macro up behind, getting my upgrades, getting my advanced workshop. This drop, really important, coming in from Glaba. Um, I do get a per clean kill off on that workshop, don't uh, take any damage to it. But now his wolf drop comes, and this is a problem, because uh, I have no nothing to defend here. Um, at all. I'm moving my catapults and gats in as quickly as possible to try to defend. Um, but he is going to get a nice kill off on the advanced workshop, um, and then he has the opportunity to maybe click down the uh, forge as well. Looks like, yeah, he's going to go for the forge um, and possibly get damage done on that as well. I'm trying to repair it. I'm not sure if I get a worker to repair it. Uh, yeah, it looks like I do get one repair, but it's a little bit late, and I think he just, with these plus one wolves doing really good work, he just has enough to kill the forge. Again, not like the most critical kill from him because, I mean, I only had just started upgrades, so I, could, I can add that forge in right away. Um, but it does delay that plus one attack on the catapults, which means my catapult drops are way weaker than they otherwise would be. Um, so kind of a nice move there from Glaba. I'm adding on my... Uh, I'm now adding on the uh, towers to defend my main base. I need to have towers on my natural too. You really have to have these towers as, as beasts in order to defend those expansions. Um, and now I'm just kind of getting more and more... Uh, get my fourth base up, things like that. He's going to try to push out into the center of the map with his wolf snake. Um, already a couple of wolves getting snuck down, but there's just a little bit too much on the catapult force so that the frontal engagement just doesn't really do much for him. I think he lost quite a few units for almost no kill there, so he's forced to run away. 
Um, and that means that I can now secure my fourth base pretty, pretty defensively cleanly. If you actually run these wolf snake over here, he probably could have killed these workers and cleaned this up, which is what I'm realizing now. So I'm trying to like send some units around to deal with that. And now I have a double drop of soldiers and gats that I'm gonna, or catapults that I'm gonna try to send towards his main base. Um, he also securing a third base. Um, good stuff there from him. Uh, so both of us really continuing on to this game in, in a later stage. Uh, definitely some of those advantages that I had early in the game have kind of gone away. Even like the fact that I have these random workers around isn't so ideal. Um, I think I try to think about taking a fifth base or something, but that doesn't really work out so well. Um, but I do get this fourth base up at a pretty solid timing, which for mech is pretty nice. Um, so as I drop here, I have a lot of targets to think about killing. Um, I do decide to go for the... Um, uh, uh, the layers, I get to uh, Q click down between the two layers, so these catapults are doing really, really good execution here, and I try to kill these double layer um, as quickly as I can, which is nice because I can deal, deal with the um, uh, dragon threat pretty quickly and actually keep his dragon counts at a really low uh, place. Now, I do make a mistake here. I, I don't continue to kill this layer. I should have made sure I killed that layer. Um, I could have just hit it with a couple more catapult shots, and I think it would have gone down, but I stopped looking at it. Um, and I think because I have to go back to defend here, he's sending his wolf snake in to harass my third base. He does get a good kill on the on the tower there. Now I just continue to throw down towers at my fourth base, try to secure my expansions as much as possible. Um, one mistake that I already am making here is my army is pretty small, and I don't have too much production. I only have double workshop production. So I have to be really careful with my army, um, especially as the catapults can actually kill tons of uh, units there. Um, I still have a nice advantage here, I, I would say, in general. I mean, I'm up in supply. I have four, four secure mining bases. Um, you know, upgrades are coming. Towers are coming in good positions in general. But I do have to be careful because uh, if I lose this army, for example, um, things are going to get rough for me. So this is kind of the mistake I make in this game is I'm deciding to make a move out, um, even though he has a lot of wolf snake in position. Um, and I'm, don't, I'm not bringing enough workers to really make this a really deadly push. Um, so kind of a, a misplay on my part here to not bring workers with this play, with this push. And probably even making this push until I have my four bases really secure is probably a mistake. Um, only 104 supply mech to push is it can be a pretty scary uh, thing to do. And I'm pushing towards a completely dry base too, so this push isn't even actually pushing towards anything efficient. Um, I am getting more workshops, which is what I really need here. Uh, but you can see my money is kind of get not really being macroed out correctly uh, in this situation. I kind of have this idea of killing his lair. Um, and just kind of securing this base, because I know this is kind of a fifth base that he needs to take. Um, but I don't really have enough here to totally get this done, unfortunately. Um, and I do also lose the uh, the Ballastate pretty early in the fight, which means there's really no way to stop the dragons from just killing me. Um, I think I do trade pretty okay here. A lot of Wolf Snake gets killed. Um, and if we look at the in uh, units lost, or the uh, income lost, you can see it's, it's pretty equal. I mean, obviously I lose a lot of very expensive mech units. I do kill some stuff but not really enough to justify that losses. And now I'm kind of realizing that my production is not where it needs to be. I need to just keep adding on uh, towers and such. I'm trying to secure a fifth base over here, um, which probably I would have been able to defend if I had the uh, uh, the mech army that I just lost. But unfortunately, now that I don't have the mech army, it's pretty tough to defend this type of base when I have a lot of wolf snake coming and knocking on the front door. Uh, my army is a little bit uh, disorganized as well. You can see units just kind of s sitting around everywhere. Um, and another nice wolf drop coming in on the top right side. Once again, uh, discombobulated catapults really not doing really good stuff. Glob is hitting pretty hard here with his uh, wolf snake. This is a good tempo play from him. He, he cleaned up my army really nicely, and now he's able to actually use that tempo to secure uh, the engagement here. His wolf snake is just doing a great job. Uh, meanwhile, the wolves here actually focused down the tower. I think I wasn't paying attention, didn't realize that there was wolf snakes here. I mean, I have a ton of wolf workers. I think these workers, in addition to the tower, would have killed that really, really quickly. But unfortunately, I'll focus on the, on the fight over here. So another really good position here to clean up that tower and allow him to continue his aggression uh, in the other side of the map. Um, in general, uh, I should have had a lot more workers with this fight. You can see that I have a lot of workers just kind of sitting here. Um, f at least four or five of those should have been uh, with my main army to defend and to keep repairing. Because I think with auto repair, a lot of these fights would have been a lot closer and I would have been able to keep my army together um, a lot better. But right now, it's just kind of like the mech forces are just really bleeding out because you can see that, uh, oh my goodness, I lose a double drop of Ballast day too. That's really, really bad. Um, just very, very sloppy play coming out for me in the last couple minutes, unfortunately. Um, just kind of falling apart to the uh, wolf snake pressure. Um, 
and the production is just not where it really needs to be. I, I no longer really have the money to afford the amount of production that I need, and again, I lose an army. Um, just in general, I think this entire game, I was just a little bit too sloppy with, like, positioning, where I was sending my units in, uh, in, in small groups when I should have been waiting till I had, like, 120 supply before I'm actually at all moving. Uh, because, you know, when you're facing Wolf Snake, and you, once you get maxed out, suddenly your army does really well, you know? Um, but, because, you know, you're much more supply efficient, but, uh, oh my goodness, I'm not even producing. But, uh, once his, uh... Once this wolf snake is at like 130 supply and I'm at like 80 supply, that's pretty tough because my, I just don't have as many mech units and he just overwhelms with his wolf snake uh, forces. If we take a quick check on the upgrades, uh, I'm at plus one one, he's at plus one or plus two one. Um, I am trying to send out a couple catapult drops I think at this point to try to uh, deal with the dragons. I send this catapult drop but it gets caught uh, unfortunately by his dragons and I decided to run my workers away because I figured the dragons would come and kill this and I don't really have the anti-air. Uh, in position yet. Actually, I don't think I have any anti-air, so I kind of, uh, I'm actually okay with sacrificing this drop because it keeps my worker line alive. But however, now the wolf snake just comes and hits my fourth base, and now things just fall apart left and right, um, because he has dragons to attack my main and natural, um, he has wolf snake to come kill my third base, uh, my fourth base, excuse me, and now he's also securing his own fifth and sixth base, uh, so he really has all the income he needs now to uh, win this game. I haven't been able to kill any of his bases yet. Um, so really, the beast player has, has gone from, from basically a losing position to a winning position in just a couple minutes here. A um, couple of misplays from my mech play, for sure. Um, and Glaba gets everything. Uh, one here. In any event, uh, I'm trying to desperately secure my fourth base over here, but uh, it's not really going to be enough. He, for some reason, doesn't push in here. I guess it's because I have these Ballastae here. Um, I probably would have done a little more damage with my dragons if I was controlling him, but he's okay with just kind of sitting there and defending. And now we just kind of see the game continue. Globa's really maxed out. 150 supply to 188, or 155 to 88, excuse me. And uh, once you get to these type of numbers, you can just A-move your dragons in. Uh, it's really hard to have enough ballast to stop the amount of dragons, and also have enough units to stop the amount of wolf snake on the, on the underground. So it's just so many units uh, from the beast player that it's just there's really not a lot that I can do to defend. I realize that there's just just too many units. Um, he even gets a really nice engagement where the wolf snake is chasing the ballast days, and the dragons are chasing, are killing everything else on the ground without the ballast hitting them. A um, little bit disconnected with a, a dropship, should have like one dropship with two ballast day at all times, but don't have that, I only have the single ballast day. He finds, I think he kills three ballast day over here when I need four over here, so. Um, just nothing left for uh, me to do at this point except to tap out, there's just too many, too much wolf snake um, everywhere killing my units. He even brings his two catapults from early in the game to fight, um, and a really much needed win from uh, YOLO here. They are able to... Uh, take a 2-1 map advantage going into the third map, which means uh, they are guaranteeing an ace match, which is always really good. They are kind of facing a potential 3-1 loss. Um, and now they give Thurx the opportunity to secure the win with a 3-1. So um, this is definitely a map uh, that is so important in this series at the moment. We have um, YOLO Thurx sitting here up against... Prankster Gangster, Prankster Gangster playing a second map representing OP Kata and YOLO Thurx up in the top right representing uh, YOLO, of course. Um. <laughs> but uh, this is a really important match for both teams um, as I just mentioned. So Prankster has been prepping a 2 den build on this map. Um, basically, his mindset, and he was telling me before, was he doesn't think Thurx is as good at defending uh, the early game micro. So he's already sending his worker across, going to go for that uh, two den expand. Um, Thurx tends to play castle first as well. Um, when I was prepping with Prankster, I was telling him that Thurx probably is going to go for the castle first with a tower, similar to what Glaba did uh, in the last map that we just watched, um, which is theoretically a pretty good build against two den, so we're going to have to see how... Um, Thurx uh, defends this, or what build he actually does to go, to go for. It is a castle first right away. Once again, just a quick note, he is playing that way where he cuts workers. 
um, which once again is, is going to be weaker to cheese because you do have less workers, which means you have less units to defend with, just straight up. Workers are, you know, your defensive tools when you play castle first. You need plenty of those to defend. So um, Thurks is going to be quite behind. The other thing with the less worker count is you actually end up having less income because uh, if you're under pressure, you're probably not going to be mining for your natural base, which means your opponent actually starts out mining you in the early game, even though you are the defending player. So just something to keep in mind when you do cut workers like this. Um, so now Thurx is, uh, Prankster has added a den at home as well as a den expansion here. Um, once again, Thurx just adding the house, adding the expansion. Um, no tower or den down yet, so we have yet to see what kind of build choice he's going to make. Um, th you could make a, a, a den like right here and you could cover almost everything. So this would be a nice placement, I would say, for a tower um, for defensive purposes. Um, once again, he's at 112 supply. Yeah, he makes the tower. Yeah, I, I, this is a, also potential power place, and I don't like this one as much because it, I feel like it doesn't cover the right side as nicely, but it's still fine. Um, and now it's all going to come down to micro because uh, uh, Prankster's really on a clock here. He needs to um, try to do damage uh, before that tower is up. Now, obviously, the tower comes up really quickly. The, the one weakness of this build for Thurx is the problem that the right side is very open, and uh, it's possible that, that Prankster will just go into the main base. Um, so this is the difference you saw between this map and the last one, where, um, and you can see Thurx already thinking about that. He's trying to get the, the wall down. Um, now, this wall is a little too far because it's, uh, it's not in position to def be defended by the tower. Um, now, oh my goodness, Prankster does, or Yolo does, uh, Thurx does not get the tower down, so the tower dies, and oh my goodness, so many workers from Thurx are now going down. This is brutal. I think this is, uh, this is possibly game-ending damage. He lost so many workers there, but now Prankster can go into the main and just kill as many workers as he wants. In fact, he has enough wolves. I think he can kill every wor worker that, uh, Thurx has here if he wants to. I mean, he can just click down all these workers. It looks like he's deciding to go for the tower. I don't know if I agree with that choice. I would probably just kill the workers if I was him. Maybe he's going to kill... Uh, yeah, it looks like for some reason uh, Prankster just decided he wants to kill the castle. I really, really feel like if he just sent all his wolves in, he would be able to kill every single worker from Thurx, and it would just be completely game over. However, the situation is still pretty good for him if he kills uh, the castle from... Uh, Frank, uh, from Thurx here. I mean, if he kills this castle, he's going to be 12 workers to 8. He's going to be on the equal bases to Prankster, and he's going to have better uh, wolf count. He's basically have every single advantage. I mean, look at the supplies, 33 to 12. Um, so not a lot of things that Thurx can do now, unfortunately. I think just the, the Sim City ended up just working against him. Um, the ability for the wolves to just run to the main base, even though there was a tower here, um, was really, really good. Um, for Thurks. And now I think if Prankster just A moves and kills as many workers as possible, which is what he's doing, uh, then there's going to be just nothing left for uh, Thurks to do. One worker goes down. Uh, let's see, two workers go down. Maybe three. If Prankster micros well, I think he could get three or four here. Uh, looks like he uh, made some micro mistakes. I don't know why these wolves are up here. I think if he had just really focused, he could have gotten these three low health workers dead for sure. But even then, uh, I mean, it wasn't the best trade for all those wolves, uh, but it's okay to make a pretty inefficient trade, because even trading all those for two workers, I mean, look at the worker count, it's 13 to 10, with the second base already halfway done for Prankster. So really, um, I think probably ended, ended up being a good build choice. Um, one thing to note is uh, Prank, uh, Thurx's ramp is a lot worse than Prankster's ramp. If Thurx was doing the same build at his ramp, he could actually have blocked with workers um, and used another, like a house, den, house, and then two worker block, and you actually defend really easily. Um, but the way his Sim City was and the way this ramp works, he wasn't able to do that, uh, or even try to do that, unfortunately. So now it's 5 wolves to 5, 14 workers to 10, um, and 2 bases to, to 1. So every advantage for Prankster Gangster. Uh, I don't know why he's pulling workers here. He doesn't need to. He obviously has 5 to 3 workers. But uh, I think he realizes that now, fixes that, sends those workers in. And just a really good situation for Prankster. He's way up. And uh, there's not a lot of things he can do to lose from this position if he just continues to macro up well and produce units well, um, and it will be good stuff. Uh, Thurx, uh, the only really thing he can do, I would say, at this point is, um, you know, try to expand and maybe play it out. He doesn't really know exactly what Prankster's eco is like. I mean, he probably can expect from the wolf count that there's a second base up. Um, so I think you really all you can do is, is hope for a really good wolf engagement. Uh, maybe try to get a surround on these wolves and then leverage that into some sort of advantage, uh, some sort of counterattack. Definitely killing the den that's in 
uh, on the map is really important for Thurks. Um, I would say I'd probably try to kill that and then just try to hammer out a ton of wolves and uh, maybe catch Prankster off guard with the amount of wolves that he has. Uh, ooh, nice play here from, from uh, Prankster. He actually does pick off one worker with a wolf, with a single wolf, which is really, really big deal and really, really nice. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Thurks is trying to expand, but again, he's at 10 workers. I mean, he has nothing, man. He's going to be down almost double workers, and his second expansion is going to come up around the time that uh, Prankster's third base is going to come up. So every second this game goes by is just a terrible second for YOLO Thurks, unfortunately. Um, he just, you know, took too many worker damage from that early game, and there's really not a lot for him to do now. Um, Prankster is pulling out and getting his workers, or his dragons, excuse me. He's got his lair down. Uh, really nice play. He's got, you know, dragons, which is another, like, only tiny thing that maybe Thurks could do is, like, one base dragon or something. So Prankster getting his dragons out already um, is already you know, kind of making himself safe to that, making sure there's no tricks that... Thurks can bring out, really. Um, I mean, look at the worker count. 19 to 11. Um, just nothing here for Thurks, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not a lot for him to do at the moment. Uh, Prankster is being pretty careful about this. Obviously, getting the third base is, is not even ne that completely necessary, but it's pretty good to try to break the tower just to make sure you have the eco behind you. You're not making any uh, silly mistakes um, by not having that eco. Um, but meanwhile, he can just probably continue to pressure up, throw down a couple more dens, and then just overwhelm Thurx with a massive army. Probably wait for a couple dragons here, I would assume, from Prankster, just to make sure. Um, but uh, that's really all he needs to do. He is trying to scout just to see if there's, like, dragons or something coming out. But, uh, doesn't look like there are. I will say, interesting choice here from Thurx going for the Advanced Workshop. Probably a pretty solid choice. You probably really can't go dragons on this low eco. But uh, one way that maybe you can come back is if uh, Prankster builds too many dragons and you get just a, like two, two Ballastay dropship with Black Powder. That can kill a lot of dragons, uh, especially if it's well microed and uh, repaired by workers. So that's one way you can kind of leverage lower eco versus dragons just by doing this. Um, a lot of times even when you're, you know, playing a regular game when you're, you know, even, you can go for the Ballastay and try to just lean into upgrades and ground army and overwhelm your opponent if they go dragons. So I do like this choice from Thurx. He's, he's doing his best to play it out, and, and he is facing technically a slightly weaker player, so, like, if you really play perfectly, you, you kind of have this idea of maybe you can play, you can pull it out, um, even though you are, like, eons and eons behind. Um, so I, I like the way Thurx is playing this. He's doing his absolute best, I would say. Um, he's making all the moves that, that maybe he has to move. I mean, obviously, he has to continue to make really clean uh, uh, macro decisions here in general, uh, which seems to be, he seems to be doing more or less well. Um, but uh, it's still going to be really, really tough because, I mean, Prankster has so much. Now Prankster is hitting on the right side with a couple wolves, and now he's attacking with the left. So Prankster is going to now see the third base, and it looks like he's actually going to... He's not going to cancel it, but he's going to start putting damage on it, and he's seeing that there's no workers here, so he's free to start taking engagements. Um, meanwhile, we can see more wolves, more dragons being produced by Prankster. He's got his upgrades coming, um, and really everything that he possibly needs is on the map. It is four dragons to one Bellastay, but uh, in general, especially before block powder and before dropships, the dragons can dance around and do a lot of damage to, uh, to the army. Uh, of Yolo Thurk. So I do, I think it's it's pretty tough to make this defense well um, with the Ballastay and the uh, Dropship. I actually like to get the Dropship before the second Ballastay, just because I feel like, I mean, it's better just to try to move around with the, with the airship than to try to just, just defend with too slow Ballastay. Now, I do like the tower up here. Um, obviously, the trick placement's a little bit wonky. should be here, not there. But uh, the tower is good because it does defend his main base from dragons, which he kind of knows are coming. Unfortunately, the Sim City is a little bit lousy from Thurks here, and it makes it a little bit hard to get his, uh, his Ballastay in. But obviously, you really want the dropship anyway, so it doesn't matter as much um, as it could matter. Uh, meanwhile, we do see Prankster throwing down his fourth base. Uh, the dragons do get caught by the Ballastay, so good micro from uh, Thurks here. He gets not quite a kill, but he gets a lot of damage on two of these dragons, and if he chases them down, they have to run away. Uh, they might get like one or two pot shots off, but they have to run away right away once the Ballastay comes and chases them down. Um, almost getting a kill here, but not quite. Oh my goodness, that dragon is so close to death. One more uh, shot from the Ballastay will kill it immediately. Um, but really, Prankster has everything. He's got he's got double supply right now, so he, I mean he can just a move all his wolves in, kill the third base, and uh, this game is pretty much over. I think he's finally now going to be collecting all his units together. Um, he's he's a bit supply blocked, and he needs to add his upgrades in. But 
um, overall, I mean, just so far ahead from Prankster Gangster. There's not a lot that Thurks can do. Um, his opponent didn't really make any mistakes as far as, like, macroing behind or anything like that. So uh, there's really been no openings for Thurks to really win this game at this point. Uh, he does have a decent wolf count, but it's he's still down, like, nine wolves. Or ten wolves versus his opponent, so... Uh, you know, you can see this wolf fight's fairly even, slightly advantage for Thurks. But uh, at the meantime, so many workers are getting killed on the backside by, by Prankster. Prankster splitting up his dragons, kind of hitting the left and right side at the same time. Unfortunately, these dragons are probably going to get killed because of that. Um, a lot of damage going down then by the Ballastay. But it doesn't really matter because just so many workers have been killed at this point. Um, Prankster is trading kind of inefficiently, but it's efficiently enough to uh, to win in the game because there's just uh, no units left for There's no workers left for Thurks and there's no more income. Um, once uh, Prankster kind of collects his wolves together and actually sends them in, I think he's just going to win this game because he has so many wolves. Um, so with soon upgrades coming. I mean, there's just no mining at the third base, whereas Prankster has uh, great fourth base production. It's kind of a similar situation we saw to Prankster versus YOLO uh, versus uh, Yummy. Uh, basically, it's it's the same thing. This two base player with basically no third base just desperately trying to hold on against just this massive onslaught of wolf dragon. Uh, that just won't stop coming. I mean, the Wolf Dragon is not going to stop. The upgrades are finally kicking in. We almost have plus two done for Prankster. And uh, it's really kind of this this game of waiting until Prankster decides to A-move uh, because this game is, is, is basically over. Wolf just dancing and spazzing out over here, living his best life. Um, at this point in the game, uh, yeah, there's not a lot for both. Uh, for Thurks to do. I like what he did with the snakes as well. Technically, you know, it's a tech advantage, so maybe he can win wolf snake fights, but um, I don't really love the, uh, oh my goodness, looks like Thurks is having some issues with his macro. I don't love the fortress choice. I think you just lean in the wolf snake uh, ballastay and maybe you can defend. Unfortunately, oh no, this is terrible. If this airship goes down, oh my gosh, a horrible move for Thurks. He wasn't paying attention, loses an airship to three dragons, and now it's really over because he has no way to defend the dragons, and there's just not anything more for him to do at this point. Um, there's just nothing left for uh, Thurks to do, I would say. Uh, good play from uh, Prankster overall. Um, really clean. M nice shroud on the wolves here. Uh, Thurks does wiggle out, but it's just too much damage. These plus two wolves are now just going to win every single engagement they fight against the 0-0 zero, zero wolves of Thurks. So this will bring the scoreline to a 2-2 score in this series. Once again, this is a critical, critical match um, for both teams in the Little War Game Pro League. So both both teams have been playing really hard, really holding on as much as possible in every single map. But now we are going to see map 5. It's going to be an ace match, um, and both teams are going to bring out their, their ace players. They're going to bring out Slammer 4 for Opikata and AC for YOLO. And the map is Cursed Temple, which we're going to see in just a moment. Um, looks like Thurks is holding on just a little bit longer, but, I mean, look at the amount of wolves from Prankster here. There is nothing left um, for our YOLO player, really, to do except GG out at this point. He's down to 18 supply, um, and there is the GG um, rip. YOLO, Thurks. And that does bring us, as I said, to game number five on Cursed Temple. This is the moment. This is the map uh, that will decide the fate of these two teams in Pro League. Um, critical, critical map on Curse Temple um, for both players. In the bottom left, once again, losing the first map, Slammer 4. And in the bottom right, also losing his map, it is YOLO AC. Kind of the funny thing about this uh, series was both players' aces did drop the ball. Um, so would wonder what uh, Hero of Ages versus Globo would have been like as an ace map <laughs> for these two teams. Um, but uh, both teams still feeling like these are their best players to play the game, uh, do send them out. And right away we see something crazy coming out from Icy. He is going <clears throat> for the worker. Uh, uh, looks like this is not a worker scout, this is a proxy worker for sure. So here it comes. Worker is on the way to scout out. And... Uh, I, on the other hand, am just going for a workshop expand. I'm deciding to play it safe. I feel like the workshop, or excuse me, one den expand. I feel like the one den expand is a pretty safe way to play. My idea behind it is I want to get into a beast versus beast, or perhaps a beast versus rax. I feel very good about my beast. Um, I think it's probably a confidence thing since I just lost against Glaba. I wasn't feeling great about my workshop play. Um, 
So that is going to be my game plan going to this, whereas AC is going to go for the 2 racks. Now on paper, a 2 racks Raider is really good against a 1 den, I feel like. I feel like you just don't have the wolf count to defend. Um, and unless you see the racks on the map, they actually hit before your tower can get up. Like if you scout it across the map with your one, first wolf, it's a little bit too late to really cleanly defend against a 2 racks. Um, now you can kind of block the ramp maybe, which is like your one way of perhaps keeping the game alive is you can't let a raider in because once a raider gets in they start jumping or stuff like that. Um, but this is all a little bit moot because it looks like uh, AC is actually going for the soldier, which is a really interesting choice. I don't really agree with it. I think the soldier is, is just worse than a raider in the early game. Um, but this is kind of what AC is going for. He's deciding to go for the fast soldier play. And once again, uh, I don't see this at all. Uh, the, the positioning on these barracks is such that uh, yeah, you just don't see it with your first wolf scout. In the future, I will scout this position probably when I play one den, just because it would take two seconds just to scout up and down. Um, or scout with your first worker, right? Um, but I just didn't even consider this as a possibility. Uh, my thought was you either, like, two racks just in base, or you set, put a racks up the top side somewhere like this. But I never really considered this as a as a proxy position. Of course, I know it's a proxy immediately once my, work, my wolf gets across map, so... Um, it doesn't take me long to know. Okay, this is this is uh, this is a Rax play, um, and I immediately start building a tower with my worker. I even halt production here because I know I need that tower, and I bring uh, six workers immediately to defend. So it's going to be six workers and a wolf against two soldiers. He's going to throw the tower down right here, uh, but I have a large amount of workers, so I basically decide that I want to try to fight this. Um, immediately and I want to try to kill these soldiers. Uh, one soldier gets a little bit trapped but the so wolf also gets trapped. Um, I decide to kind of target down the wolf here but a lot of these these, these these soldiers are honestly kind of derping around they're not actually fighting as much. A lot of hits that they probably could have got off didn't go off. Um, at this point I kind of decide uh, I don't want to take that fight I'm going to lose too many workers. I decide to try to click down the tower which I don't know if that's the correct choice. I do kill one worker. Um, now the tower is up so my idea I guess was to kind of fight underneath the tower. If I fight in this area I'm underneath the tower. Um, and also, his uh, his tower is, was in range of my tower, so uh, that's why I decided that it's okay to not take that fight. Um, now I'm just kind of trying to chase down his workers here, because I can kill a worker. That's really important, but he has too many soldiers to really get that done. Um, so I do realize, okay, he's got his he's got a tower coming. I do get a nice uh, engagement here, two wolves against uh, one soldier, and I also get the worker down. So in general, decent micro here, I would say, for myself so far. Um, my, my goal right now is just to kind of pick off this damaged uh, work soldier, which I do. So I get I get the kill on the soldier. He does get an archer, so it's a lot harder to micro around him now that the archer is here. Um, and I also decide to send two wolves as a counterattack in the backfield, and I'm throwing down my own workshop. So my idea is I'm just going to tower up and build catapults, and I'm going to defend on two bases. I know if I can just keep two bases alive, this game is over. There's nothing for him to do. Um... There is not yet just something for him to do. So AC is a little bit panicking, I think, here. He just had to go for the workshop, but a really questionable choice on the construction. Uh, oh, yeah, I think he was complaining because his tower, big mistake here, his tower is one hex too far away to hit my house or my den. So this tower, if it goes up, will actually kill these two structures pretty easily, um, but it actually doesn't go up, so it forces him to uh, build the catapult den instead. Bit of a mismicro on my part. I do lose a wolf here. Um, and I actually forced him to bring two soldiers back um, from the engagement with my two wolves that are cross map. Um, I don't think I know about this workshopping quite yet. Um, I think I'm going to wait until I get a catapult out. My idea is to get the catapult to the high ground where I can kill this tower. Um, and meanwhile, I'm just trying to buy time um, and kill, uh, damage the archers. Um, I'm not repairing my workshop, which I probably should be. Um, but, I mean, the thing is about this is he doesn't have a second base, so, like, he needs to kill me with this push. Now, he has soldiers, and he has archers, um, and he's going to have catapults. Um, but it, I don't know if that's going to be enough to break through towers and catapults of my own. Um, this wolf is just wandering around the map, probably going to come back. Looks like I did lose one wolf to these soldiers, so the soldiers from AC do join back. I realize that this base is going to this is gonna fall, and I need more defenses, so I just th start throwing down my tower. Um, now, I realize that his catapult facility is here, so I decide to build a tower... Um, along the edge here to actually start killing these two structures. Um, and I also notice I'm Q-clicking with my catapult to, to hit that to do as much damage as possible with these two things. But now the den does go down. I get only one more uh, wolf out, and he also Q-clicking his catapult is getting damage down on 
uh, my units. So I decide now is the time to fight. I'm targeting my catapults on his archers. I'm pulling workers as much as possible. I should be uh, mineral walking my workers through, but I end up not able to do that. I finally get the mineral walk through. Um, he actually doesn't get the tower down, and my second tower goes up, so now a lot of damage is going down on his units, and I realize, okay, now I can pull my workers back. The defense has kind of been made, and I know his tower is dead. Um, I killed, I think, four soldiers and two archers in that engagement, so I did lose a lot of my... my my workers there and my wolves there, but I now have the catapults up. And now that I have two catapults, I can actually do good defense. Really huge hit there. I get a hit on one of the archers uh, and kill an archer, which is a really, really important move there. Um, and now I realize that if I just pull some workers and, and wolves, I can actually fight his soldier and archer forces because um, he doesn't have the tower. Um, I'm doing the best I can to try to get damage on his, his archers with my catapults, but unfortunately I miss micro and I don't really get that. And I also miss micro my workers a little bit. Um, so this ends up being a pretty bad trade for me in general, but I do buy a little bit of time for my uh, my tower to stay alive uh, And now my catapults can start working on him. Meanwhile, his workshop has died. I now have three catapults to two um, I'm just building catapults and gats at this point. I don't even have any more wolf production. Uh, my last wolf dies here um, But catapult gats and workers are all really good The only problem with my situation here is the fact that uh, it's gonna be hard to defend my catapult um, and now I make a mistake here. I move my catapults up to the top side, which allows his soldiers to start getting good damage on them. Um, and I'm actually out of the engagement for just a second, which gives him just enough time to hit a couple more rocks onto my ca my castle, and he does kill the castle. So that's a huge move for AC. He has killed the castle. He's brought my mining down to a low level. However, he does trade out a catapult and oh, both catapults get picked off because of it, and now I can just move back to my towers. And the problem for AC is, yeah, he's killed my... my, my uh, my castle, but he doesn't have a way to counter if I build it again, and now I have the positioning on his production. So with my Gatlings and my soldiers, I can actually kill, I can actually kill his two, uh, his two, uh, barracks here. And once I kill the barracks, now I do lose a catapult, big mistake there, I could have had workers uh, mining there. Uh, definitely it's bad that I don't have workers in this situation. I mean, a couple workers in this fight goes really, really easily for me. But in general, he just doesn't have the units. Um, I mean, he's he's got a couple of archers here that are getting chased by my Gatlings. Now my catapults will kill his two expansions. He has no production behind, and I, he just has no way to stop my forces from killing him at this point. Uh, I don't even need a, a second castle at this point because I have the, the units and I have the production, and he has neither. Um, so it looks like this is actually going to be a hold for Opikata and for me. Um, versus AC. Really, really critical game, man. This game was full of pressure. Um, and AC is just confused why I would go for a one den. Once again, it's just for safety and just for scouting. Um, but uh, that just means that um, looks like OP Cata is going to take the 3 1 2 victory here um, versus uh, AC. It looks like he's. Uh, for some reason taking a castle, but he knows there's no way to defend it. I have two catapults, two gats, I can just send a couple workers. Um, and it looks like AC is going to give up here. He's realizing he just doesn't have anything left. Um, and he does GG out. So there is a 3-2 win for Opikata in week 4 of Pro League. Puts them in a really good position to advance. Um, and it basically eliminates YOLO from contention. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Pro League series. I have another Pro League match uh, for Match Day 5 to bring you guys uh, in a little bit. Um, and, but until then, I will catch you next time.